Welcome to Bitcoin Live. I am Joe Bagonis, the content director of Bitcoin Live. And today I am joined by one of the premier mentors of Bitcoin Live, Mr. Peter Brandt. Peter, how are you doing today? Um, I'm not premier, but I'm doing okay. You're not premier. You're like you're the grand poobah of Bitcoin Live. Yeah, I think you have to be, you know, people call me a legend. I think you got to be dead to be a legend. So. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad you're here today. I'm sure everybody watching right now is glad that you're here. I want to thank everybody who is here today watching this. This is a really exciting time. I'm really excited to be talking to Peter. Peter, let's dive into a few questions. Tell us about yourself. Why did you become a trader? What do you love about trading? Well, I'm not sure I love anything about trading. I mean, it's, it, it's, uh, it's you know, I, I, I love what I do in my time away from trading more than I love trading. For me, trading has just been a way to make a living, uh, although it's been an exciting way. I started trading back in the mid-1970s, and that is probably before the majority uh, of the people listening were born, maybe even before their parents were born. But uh, I started because I lived in Chicago, got introduced to the grain markets at the Board of Trade, absolutely captivated by commodity futures. And uh, I have made my living ever since as uh, commodity futures and forex trading. And for me, it's just the challenge of trying to get better. It's the challenge of, I'm not going to say beat the game, because I think in reality, you don't beat the markets. You, you kind of have to manage yourself. A trader's biggest enemy is themselves, and so for me, the challenge is: can I overcome all the things that I that I basically want to do to sabotage myself, and in the process achieve some level of excellence in terms of the practices uh, that I take uh, uh, in market speculation? So uh, it's it's uh, you know I don't have to write memos, I don't have to attend meetings. All I have to do is trade, and uh, I've had the freedom to be able to do that now for. Uh, in 2020, I will have traded in six different decades. And, you know, I, I, I count it an honor that that's how I've been able to make my living, support my family and, and generate whatever wealth I have. So I, I hope that answers your question. For sure. I, I, and there's a lot you said in there. I mean, obviously seeing six different decades of trading, there's a lot of things that you've learned. You obviously have a lot of wisdom when it comes to the market. But there's a, a key word that you said in there, and that's challenge. And that's kind of where I, I want to steer this next question is, what is your approach to teaching someone who's, you know, at any level of trading, whether they're a beginner, intermediate, or what you would consider an expert, what is your approach to teaching someone who wants to continue learning and getting better at trading? You know, there's, there's two parts to that question, Joe. Uh, I think where most people go when they think about uh, training is uh, they go to the idea of how do I teach somebody when to buy or when to sell a particular coin. I, I don't think that's teachable. I, I think that's something that everybody has to learn on their own. They have to try to figure out how they do that on their own. For me, teaching is really a matter of focusing on the principles of market speculation good, sound, best practices when it comes to market speculation. So opposed to you know, some sort of little technique on how to determine whether Bitcoin is going up today or down today or up tomorrow or down tomorrow or what's going to happen three months from now, I, I think those are not worthy questions for me to try to help somebody with. What I can do is offer kind of guideposts along the way uh, based on all of the mistakes that I've made in my trading, what I've learned over the years that I've traded, that really deal with kind of common core basic principles, foundational principles of market speculation. You know, things like cutting your losses very, very quickly, uh, uh, protecting your capital, uh, staying emotionally neutral, uh, you know, the kinds of things that really uh, are the things that I think in the end really make the difference between a successful market speculator or not. To me, trade identification really only contributes probably 10% of what I consider to be my edge as a market speculator, although trade identification is where most people go, and that's really what most people want to learn about is uh, trade identification. I think that is uh, when you kind of reduce and boil the pot down, uh, that is really not one of the key factors that's going to make somebody long-term a uh, successful market speculator. And so 
teaching, um, you know, I'm not going to be involved in direct teaching. What I'm going to be involved in is sharing concepts that I believe are crucial for a person to uh, survive as a market tra as a market trader, if that's your goal. Okay. Uh, now, the thing that cryptocurrency is is like a new asset class, uh, as people would consider. Uh, you know, you and I were talking a little bit about this before um, before the webinar. What excites you about it? What? Why do you think this is a great opportunity for people to invest in trading? Well. You know, I, I got to tell you, there, there's a lot of people who tout uh, cryptocurrencies as being uh, the future for a lot of different things. And I think they're right. I, I mean, I, I consider myself to be lucky that at the tail end of my trading career, cryptocurrencies came along. Although I'm not sure I want to use the term cryptocurrencies because in the, in the true sense, I don't see them as, as currencies. Not at this point anyway. Uh, it, as a medium of exchange for global commerce, I, I think we're still a little bit a ways away from that, although I think it's the leading edge. But just to kind of you know, really have cryptos as the, t the last bookend of, of my career, I, I just, what, what a thrilling thing. I, mean, these, uh, I got involved in, in, in the crypto markets in Bitcoin in 2016, and for me, it was, it was just a trade at the time. But little did I know that it was a trade that was going to go from five hundred dollars of Bitcoin to <laughs> plus. I mean, that, so that's what I look at. Is this is a market that responds very, very well to the way I look at markets, the way I study markets. Uh, the crypto markets are are, are very congenial to uh, the perspective that I take in trying to look at markets and understand them. Uh, there's great liquidity. There's great action. I mean, I I don't. Uh, I don't trade in there the markets that change in price from 10 to 20 percent a given week. So as a trader, uh, I just look at it as a market that's got volatility. It's got uh, it's got liquidity, uh, at least macro uh, cap uh, cryptos have they have liquidity. And it's a market that moves and responds well to the charts. And and uh, so for me, it's just been a perfect market to trade here in the waning years of my career. You know, you bring up some interesting points there. And, and, you know, when you're saying that, you know, Bitcoin was at five hundred dollars and, you know, there's obviously a wealth of experience and knowledge, uh, you know, that you have. But now all of a sudden there's these people that are popping up that are considered crypto geniuses or at least self-proclaimed crypto geniuses. And they're typically teenagers or in their young 20s. What what do you make of people like that that are in this space? You know, I don't want to say what separates you because it's kind of a rhetorical question. We obviously know what separates you from them. But what do you make a, a, of all these so-called geniuses out there now? Well, I mean, they're one-year wonders. Uh, you, you know, they, they caught the big move up. It, that wasn't a hard move to catch. Uh, you, you know, what what my challenge would be, so how have you done since December or January? I, I mean, that's, you know, that's where, that's where it all goes down if somebody bought uh, bitcoins a dollar ten dollars and rode the market all the way up uh, that was a fantastic opportunity for him uh, but you know there's an old saying that you know everybody's a genius in a bull market but then when you get in a bear market or a choppy market it kind of divides the uh, the traders from the make-believers and uh, you know so I just think longevity, you know, give me longevity. I mean, not not somebody who's a flash in the pan and, you know, caught the last five days of trading and, you know, we're able to capture uh, such and such move with some little mini uh, micro coin that, that's hot on their radar screen is show me somebody that has longevity and can last in the space. That to me will bring respect on my part toward those people so i don't really pay a lot of attention to these you know these people that all of a sudden since uh the big run-up last year and in bitcoins are geniuses in the space uh, time will tell whether they'll, they'll last yeah no it, it's amazing how when uh when the price of it went down they've kind of gone a little bit quiet there's there's uh there's maybe a correlation between the two yeah that's for sure so yeah. I, I just have one more question for you, and it's kind of it's going to lead into where I'm going to let you take over and talk about, you know, what people can expect uh, from you on Bitcoin Live. And, and my question to you is, you know, what do you want people to know about you and what you will offer on Bitcoin Live? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got to admit, when it comes to completely understanding um, uh, the, the space, the technology in the space, I'm not the guy. You know, I, I'm not going to teach anything uh, to somebody th that deals with the technology of uh, distributed ledger uh, technology. I mean, I, th that's beyond me. Uh, what I do is uh, is is bring. I think I bring to the party uh, a lot of learning, a lot of common sense, uh, practical uh, ways to think about market speculation that I can share. I've done that on Twitter. I'm, I'm going to redirect that kind of activity to Bitcoin Live, and uh, my voice on in general Twitter is pretty much going to go away, uh, at least as far as the crypto space is concerned. But, you know, so I bring, you know, I bring almost 45 years of hands-on practical, I've made my living from the market knowledge that, that deals with common sense things. And so, you know, I, I think it takes three to five years for somebody really to become a trader. But what I can do is lay out for them what I think are the danger signs. Uh, you know, what, what areas of trading need to be marked thin ice, do not walk. You know, what are the things that will trap a person into uh, in, in, into making foolish mistakes? I can kind of give heads up to those kinds of things. Uh, but then the other thing that I think that I bring is is I'm not a I, I am agnostic in the space. I don't care if Bitcoin goes up. I don't care if Bitcoin goes down. I don't care if Ether goes up. I don't care if Ether goes down. If it goes up, I want to be long. If it goes down, I want to be out because I trade all my uh, cryptos against U.S. dollar. And if I don't have an ownership position in one of the one of the, the macros, you know, I uh, I I revert to uh, U.S. dollars. I revert to fiat, and, and uh, that's the way that I trade it. And so I don't have a you know I don't have a dog in the fight. Uh, and so that allows me to look at the charts and look at the charts in, in a relatively unbiased way. And, and, and with my experience in charting, being be able to say, you know, right now at any given point in time, uh, the odds favor in advance in Bitcoin for these reasons. And, you know, what I'm bringing uh, to uh, Bitcoin Live is really following the, the three or four of the major coins in a couple different ways. One way is with uh, what I've used at Factor LLC for years, which is a trend model. You know, people who who say, well, you know, it's going to the moon and Bitcoin's going to $100,000 <laughs> yes. or Bitcoin's going to a million dollars or whatever the case may be. That's fine and good, but if it goes there, how are you gonna, how are you gonna stay in an ownership position and sidestep uh, the big reactionary periods? People, you know, people say, well, I've been long Bitcoin uh, I can take it. I don't care if it's uh, declined from nineteen thousand uh, dollars down to you know the six thousand dollar area. I still have money in it, or whatever. You know, my attitude is riding Bitcoin from nineteen thousand to six thousand dollars. Even if you earn at fifty, that's nothing to be proud of. And so I think that basic approach to understanding markets through trend modeling and uh, classical charting principles will uh, will go a long way to, uh, to to helping guide a person as to when to be long, when to own, and when not to own. And that's what I hope to uh, bring to the Bitcoin Live community. You know, you just made a really great point where you said holding, you know, Bitcoin from 19,000 to 6,000. You know, working with, with all the mentors in the platform, you know, there's some common themes everybody's got. And one is that, you know, your money should work for you. And, you know, why it's fine to want to hold a coin and be positive long term, but losing that kind of capital and, and having it not work for you in the short term seem, seems seems foolish. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, and some people wear it almost as a badge of honor. It's, you know, I, I was able to ride uh, Bitcoin down 65, 70 percent value. I mean, I mean, personally, I don't think that's anything to be proud of. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, even if you owned it for much lower. And so what I hope to do is, is just some of that. You know, the, the amazing thing to me, Joe, and I see it on Twitter all of the time, is this is a new market. You have to trade it with new ideas. You mm -hmm. have a whole new uh, paradigm to, to look at price. 
and, and you know, if there if there is the best market that I can identify that that uh, comply with the way that I look at markets, it's uh, it's it's the crypto markets. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. They chart better, and I use charting principles that date back to 1933. Um, by Richard W. Schaubacher, and, and that's how I approach markets. I attempt to look at, at cryptos through the lens of Schaubacher's book in 1933, and there's no market that I trade that responds better to the basic classical charting principles uh, the, than the cryptos do. And so the idea that you need a new paradigm to examine these markets and understand these markets is absolutely foolish. Let me let me uh, let me do a little transition here. This, uh, now I'm gonna you know we have a PowerPoint slide presentation up. You know this is where I'm gonna turn it over to you to talk a little bit about you know what people can expect on the platform. So I'm gonna switch over the slide real quick. I'm sure you can see it. Uh, yeah. What I hope to do is it's kind of going to be kind of a couple layers. Is you know actually you know, why don't go to the next slide. I'll go to the next slide and then we'll back up to this one. Gotcha. Uh, I think, and, and some of you have seen this on Twitter, and I posted this on Twitter. I will no longer post it on Twitter once we go live with Bitcoin Live. Uh, this is an examination of of uh, uh, of the major of the major coins: Ether, uh, Litecoin, Bitcash, uh, Bitcoin, and I'll probably add one or two as time goes on. Uh, where I'm looking at these charts through the through a couple of different lenses. One lens. Uh, is through a trend model uh, that we've used in the markets in uh, currencies, grains, gold, uh, T-bonds over the years, which just try to keep us honest. It's, it's a proxy. You know, it, it, no matter what a person's time frame is, they have to have some sort of idea where they say this isn't an uptrend or this isn't a downtrend. And that's going to change for, for different people. But this is my time frame. And, and it, it's basically a simple moving average with, with, with a number of different rules that, that come in with it. But it is a basic trend model. I want to, you know, if I go back over all the trades I've done uh, over the years, and it, I tried to figure out the other day how many trades I've made as a trader. And it's somewhere between seven and 10,000 trades. You learn a lot uh, making seven to 10,000 trades over a you know, 40 plus year uh, lifespan. In trading, but if I look over and say what what trades really added uh, to my net bottom line over my career, and there are trades that I made that were consistent with the trend, and if I try to find it, add up the results of all the trades that I made that were inconsistent with how I define trend, all of those add up into a net loss, and so I, I try to say uh, what however I'm going to trade, I'm going to trade. Uh, in the direction of what I define as my proxy trend, and that that you can see in kind of the goal line, and and that you then see on uh, the trend model is these various phases that come in. In this case, is ether. Uh, we're currently in a downtrend. We turned into a downtrend earlier in the week, uh, having been in an uptrend for a period of time. Because here's the reality: is if ether, let's say, goes to four thousand or it goes to two hundred. Uh, it is going to go and it's going to be confirmed by the trend model. So I want to look at the trend model and I will keep the, the uh, Bitcoin Live community appraised on a weekly basis or as things change relative to what the trend model is. And the other thing is the chart model, and that's based on just basic classical charting principles. And they're either with the green dot representing an indication based on classical charting principles of a market advance or red in the case. Uh, of this chart in terms of classical charting odds that the market would decline is I, I, I will post this chart on a weekly basis with commentary. I will explain, uh, I, it won't be just a visual, I'll have some narrative which goes along with it. Uh, and then there's also going to be another feature and you can back up now, Joe, to mm -hmm. the previous one. Uh, we're not showing it vis visually, but for all the major cryptos, we're going to have a, a stop sign green, a uh, yellow, red. Uh, that will be the summary. It'll be. It'll be. Uh, whatever the light is on is going to be a combination for me of the trend model plus the chart model plus some uh, discretionary subjective judgments that I may have on the market uh, 
And, and so and that will change. That may change during the week. Uh, the, and as it changes, I'll alert the community. But if Bitcoin, for instance, goes uh, is currently in a red model, uh, which to me, uh, from my personal trading, says I need to be in cash. I need to be in dollars because I don't short. I don't short any of the cryptos. And so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, when my uh, when my stop light analysis gives me a red light on Bitcoin, that means I want to be uh, I, I want to be in cash. I want to be in U.S. dollars. If it's green, it means that the combination of all the things that I look at indicate an ownership position. Now, what that ownership position is to everybody is going to be different. I know that in my own trading, I treat uh, Bitcoins and Ether and, and, and some of the other macros in the same way that I treat a currency cross or gold or silver or corn or gold. And that is I take a, a position in the trade in my own proprietary trading where I risk no more than 1% of my, my total nominal capital on the given trade. And so, you know, I know that there are the people out there in the crypto space that are betting it all. They're going all in on their bets. I mean, uh, you're going to get richer. You're going to go broke doing that. But at least uh, so, so that's kind of what uh, th that's what I'm bringing uh, really to the Bitcoin live community is just this uh, tracking based on uh, an historically what I found to be uh, a good way to look at trend, a proxy trend, and an analysis of the charts based on classical charting. Let me make one more point, uh, uh, Joe, on charting. Mm -hmm. I, look on, uh, I look on Twitter and I see some of the charts that people have on it. And I, you know, hey, if it works for you, great. But you know, half the, more than half the charts that I see on the cryptos on Twitter, I look at them and say, you know, these, uh, someone's trying to navigate the universe or the solar system. I, I mean, there's lines everywhere. And again, if, if that helps you make money is by drawing 15, 20, 30 lines on the chart, all the more power to you. But and so just because we're in a new space with a with a new vehicle to trade doesn't mean that all of a sudden the old ways pass away. I think basic, simple classical charting, at least for me, is the way to do it. And I think that that is uh, that is reflected in fairly simple ways to try to understand price behavior. What do you, what do you, there we go. All right. Let's uh, let's take some questions from the audience. Sure. Um, you had mentioned that you don't short Bitcoin and Meatwad is asking of, of all the names. Meatwad is asking, you know, why don't you short cryptocurrencies? Well, uh, I will. I, I will trade it from the short side. But I would not do it in any of the crypto exchanges because I I don't trust Tether. Um, you know, as a U.S. citizen, I I'm more restricted in uh, in what exchanges, in which ways I can trade the crypto markets than somebody that's living in Asia or Europe. You know, U.S. citizens have restrictions on their trading positions that uh, citizens of other countries do not have. And I, I do not want my money sitting in Tether because I think Tether could be a potential disaster down the way. Uh, I will at some point be looking at the short side of Bitcoin, but it'll be through the futures market uh, because the futures market I can trust. Uh, but I want to wait. Uh, I, in my mind, the jury's still out on Bitcoin futures. I don't really think that I think the CME rushed to the market with their with their contract. I think there are some flaws in their contract. I think their contract could have been written better. And I think over time, what we could see is some modifications to the to the exchange contract and the specs of the contract. And uh, as as volume grows, uh, I will look at Bitcoin from the short side, but it'll be through the futures market. But for me, yet the futures market at the CME hasn't really proven itself. Okay, I got a question from Eric Snyder, and he is asking. What actions, if any, would you recommend governing bodies take to limit price manipulation? I don't think there's price manipulation in the majors. I mean, I see that all the time. Markets manipulated, markets manipulated. And, and I know to some degree uh, you've got that. But I, I think that manipulation, at least in Bitcoin, Ether, is greatly over exaggerated. When I see somebody shouting and yelling about Bitcoin, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, they just had a couple losing trades and they think the market was out to get them. 
uh, I, I look at the, how the market behaves and uh, it, it behaves in, in the way that uh, all the markets that I've traded over the years behave. I, I think there's far less manipulation than people are attributing. Now, that is not true when you get into altcoins because there you have pump and dump going on and, and uh, you've got some manipulation that takes place in, in, in some of the less liquid coins and the new coins that come out and the way they get promoted. Uh, we do have that, but I, I'm that that's not something that greatly concerns me. Okay, I'm gonna got a question from June, and she's asking uh, generally when trading, do you trigger on limits immediately or do you wait for candle close? Uh, it depends, June, it depends how well defined the pattern is. Uh, I no, and then that's another thing is people say, well, the market never closes. How can, how can you talk about uh, waiting for the market to close to confirm a signal? Well, you know, if the market doesn't close, you can't chart it. The fact that people have daily charts or weekly charts of the coins indicate that they are accepting the fact that there is a closing price. For me, that's the closing price Greenwich Mean Time. And so, uh, you know, I chart based on the fact that many, midnight Greenwich Mean Time is the end of the day, and that's when the bar closes for me. And uh, it, if it's a very well-defined pattern uh, that doesn't have spindles that are too large, too greatly beyond the, the, what I call the real body, I will take action during the day. Uh, although the, the, the smallest time frame chart that I'll look at is, is usually eight or six hours. I don't go down below that. And so if I see a pattern, uh, for instance, uh, in, in the case of Bitcoin, there was a great buy signal that took place on, on April 12th. And, and that was a pattern that, that I will see not only in the daily chart, but it was being confirmed on the eight hour chart. And so I can find it and I say, this is a neat pattern and it, it, it's not sloppy, it's well-defined, the lines are tight, you can clearly see it. And in, in those cases, uh, if, if it's during my waking hours and I see a breakout, I'll take action uh, and I won't wait for the candle to close. Okay, I got a question from Panos and he wants to know, uh, does someone need to understand the underlying technology behind Bitcoin or cryptos in general to be successful at trading? No. <laughs> Very simply, no. Next, next question. All right. Uh, let's see. A uh, question from Dennis. He wants to know, Peter, why, why do you not trade more stock chart patterns instead of indexes like the Dow Jones? Because I love leveraged markets. Uh, you know, I made my living on leveraged markets. I, I mean, I could go on for an hour on what I believe to be the, the benefits and the advantages for a career trader to trade leveraged markets. Problem with leveraged markets is people overtrade, they oversize. But if, if a trader comes to understand risk control and how to control the leverage, uh, they will be hard pressed in their own mind to ever trade a cash market again, where you know maybe you still have 50% leverage in stocks. When I trade stock, I don't trade leveraged positions. And so I love leveraged markets, and, and that's why I'll trade the indexes. Now, I do trade individual equities in all my retirement accounts. And so that's Keo accounts, uh, it, you know, it's IRA accounts, it's, uh, it's SEP accounts, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's those retirement monies that I've stuck away over the years that sit with Schwab and TD Ameritrade. And, and those, I, I will trade equities and I will trade them based on the charts. but but uh, that's that's not the main focus. I don't really. I mean, well, that's real money. But I don't really consider that money to be part of the proprietary trading capital at Factor Trades. You know, I, I'm a leveraged market trader with the main with the major portion of the money that I trade proprietarily. I got a question from Jorge, and he wants to know: Do you think Bitcoin is the best one to trade, or are other altcoins better? Well, I don't trade other altcoins to begin with. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just, this is going to be an editorial. Everybody has their pet altcoin. Frankly, I think at the end of the day, uh, 95 to 90 percent, 8 percent of the coins are going to end up worthless. And uh, so I want to trade coins that I think are going to be legacy coins over the long term that are going to uh, really be the coins that, that are store of value coins. And so, you know, I'm interested. Uh, 
I'm interested in the in the top five capitalized coins. Periodically, I'll look at other coins or feature other coins, but I, I want to be trading the major cap coins and and not and not these tiny little altcoins, uh, because there's going to be a day that'll come. I think when an exchange goes broke, especially these exchanges that offer 50 x margin, hundred x margin. The, those are an accident waiting to happen. And, and when those accidents happen, the exit door is going to get awful small. And so that's why I tend to stay away from the alts. Although everybody's got their favorite alt, everybody's got a story on why this alt or that alt is going to change the world. But for me, I'm going to stick with the macro caps. Uh, we've got, I mean, we're, we could go on for hours of this. I'm going to take a few more questions so we, so we can wrap this up and get along with your day and we can save some more for when we, uh, when we launch on Bitcoin live, but I've got a question from Vin. Um, I'm going to make it a little, a little less specific, but in a little more broadies. And he wants to know, how do you get a, a specific price target on Bitcoin? Um, particularly with a, with a bearish view that you, uh, recently posted. Well, I mean, I posted an alternative view. I mean, the reality is, is, is the key features of the Bitcoin chart, uh, I mean, uh, in the big picture, when you take a daily or weekly chart, you post it on a wall and you step back 10 feet, what are the major things you see? I mean, for me, the major things is we had this enormous run up, biggest bull market in the history of my trading, when, when you look at the magnitude of the move, there's never been another market that's had that magnitude of an advance uh, of all the markets I've traded. Now, the only other market that I can find that had the same kind of percent change uh, was the Reichmark, the, the German currency in the mid 1920s. Uh, and so, you know, we're talking about a magnitude that 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 is multiple times other massive moves. And for me, the key features of that is we broke a parabola in December. Uh, we've been in a declining market and we have now formed a symmetrical triangle that dates back to early February. This is a big pattern. And uh, I, I think whichever, whichever way this pattern comes out, uh, if it comes out the downside, my measurement is I take on, on, on a uh, uh, on, on a semi-log chart, I take the width of the symmetrical triangle and I project it down. And that's how I get my target. On the upside, the initial target would be the same thing, but we have seen really a series of three parabolic phases in Bitcoin so far. And I'm thinking if you get a big upside break out of this triangle, we then could be entering the fourth kind of parabolic uh, phase in Bitcoin. And who knows where the upside of that is. Okay. Uh, one of the last couple of questions, I've got a uh, question from Sarah Jex and she wants, I'm going to make it a little bit more broad, but she wants to know when trading U.S. equities, do you consider economic calendar news at all? No. <laughs> I, I love this. This is almost going to be not a have to under, The beauty of this is you don't have to understand the markets as a chartist. I don't need to understand the markets. Somebody could give me a chart and, and, and white out the name on the chart. Uh, and actually, that would probably uh, let me be more objective. And so, hey, I'm interested in the price scale on the right side of the chart, not on the name on the top. Gotcha. I'm, this is the last question. I'm going to take it from John Chang, and he wants to know your thoughts on the impact of machine learning and AI on the financial markets. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a great question because I, I, you know, I hear that all the time saying, you know, AI is going to replace all you discretionary traders. You know, all, all the money is going to be made by AI. But, you know, the reality is, is that uh, as AI progresses and uh, all, you, all you have is a bunch of AI machines that are trying to pick each other's pockets. I mean, it's not like the AI approach is going to be the big winner and the rest of us are going to be the big loser. That's not going to be the case. Uh, I mean, you're going to have one massive AI trading 20 billion AUM against a bunch of other AIs trading 20 billion AU, AUM. And it's going to end up that they're just going to kind of be out there trying to pick each other's uh, pocket by uh, uh, being one step in front of the other guys. And so I, I don't personally look at AI as being a threat to the way that I look and trade markets. 
All right, Peter, these, these were great answers, great questions from the community. Uh, I think it's time we get ready to start wrapping it up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize. You know, Peter is being really awesome and, and he's working with five terrific, five other terrific analysts on the Bitcoin Live platform. There's gonna be a lot of really great uh, features on the site. The biggest thing that I wanna communicate to the audience is this is a community. This is gonna be a positive, a safe space where people can learn and get educated about all the nuances of trading. You know, Peter's gonna be active every month, every week he's gonna have new articles, he's gonna be talking about the chart patterns, price action, we're gonna have live chat rooms, we're gonna have forums, article posts, there's gonna be so much more involved with Bitcoin Live and it's a really exciting opportunity. We really hope that you guys subscribe and, and, and join up. If you, want to, if you haven't already, and you're watching this webinar for the first time, I wanna tell you how you can get signed up. You sign up with Peter Brandt, you see that link on the screen. We're gonna have a, a, a follow-up link in the video when we post this later on today. If you're not already, please follow Peter on Twitter at Peter L. Brandt. Follow us online at Bitcoin Live. You can also find the other great mentors. Their links are below. Peter, this has been a real privilege to talk to you. Um, any final thoughts? Yeah, hey, uh you know, short short term events that take place in the charts are less uh, dependable than longer term things that take place. Uh, I mean, they fail more often. I mean, you look at five minute charts and you're going to see all kinds of things that fail. And uh, and so, you know, I have sometimes I, I want to have a bigger picture view of the market, but sometimes, you know, there's little smaller things that I'll comment on. For instance, I, if I was to comment on the market right now, I would point out that uh, on the candlestick charts, uh, should we close right where we are right now? The Bitcoin candle is what I call a foot shot. You know, you have head shots and you have foot shots. And so a close right where we're at in Bitcoin is kind of a doji pattern on the candlestick chart. Now doji patterns have to kind of be confirmed in the days I've had, but it is a potential that uh, indicates that there is some buying support that's holding uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, at current levels. So. Uh, again, that doesn't mean that that, that doesn't say where the next three thousand dollar move in Bitcoin is going to be. But you know, you take some of my shorter term comments and you, you you put them in perspective. But I will have some shorter term comments. It's the bigger, longer daily chart comments that I make uh, uh, on the website. Those are the ones that are going to be important. But periodically, I will tweet out to the community uh, shorter term things. So. Anyway, that's, that's, that's it for my end. Beautiful. Peter, thank you so much. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned. Sign up for the emails. We'll have information shortly. We're going live in two weeks. We certainly hope you're part of it. Peter, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Joe. All right.